Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Wednesday evening. It is May 30th, 2012. I am James Burns, your host, and for the rest of the segment, we are joined by my dad and a host of the Cannabis Corner, his website, CannabisCorner.com. Carrie Burns joins us right now. How are you doing tonight? Privileged to be with you, James. How are you doing? I'm all right. Good. Uh, first off, because you are a resident of Texas, I would like to discuss briefly about what transpired yesterday personally for you when you went out to the polls. You told me about this earlier when you went out to vote. Yeah, I went out to the polls about 10 o'clock in the morning, and the precinct that I vote at is one of the busier ones of the ones that they have around where the little town I live in. And uh, when I voted, and it was about 10 to 10.30, I asked the lady that was sitting at the counter, I said, have you had a good turnout? And she said, you're the 14th person to come in and vote. And I just looked at her, I said, you got to be kidding Two hours. I mean, the polls have been open over three hours, and only 14 people have voted. And she said, that's it. And I just shook my head. I couldn't believe it. I d made some kind of comment like, you know, people just don't take our political process serious. And they wonder why things get in the shape they get in. It's because of stuff like that. You don't go out and, and vote and get rid of these people that are screwing our country up. And that seems to be a common uh, theme that happened in Texas yesterday. We got a call earlier from uh, Dean, a listener. And uh, he basically said the same thing about what happened in yeah. Texas. He talked to a lot of people, asked him, hey, did you go vote? Like, no, nah, I didn't feel like going vote. Yeah, I was just amazed that people yeah. just so nonchalant, they just could care less. Nah, you know? It's okay. Yeah. Nah, no big deal. Yeah. And, and the fact that Ron Paul is a congressman from Texas, is I just couldn't believe it. I can't believe that they'd vote for anybody but him. What's shocking is, is how basically his eight counties in his congressional district they all voted for Romney in a landslide, 60 to 70-some-odd percent. That's insane. All eight of them. You think of, of all the Ron Paul supporters out there, the most hardcore ones. Should be them. Yeah, within that congressional district because they've been supporting and voting for Ron Paul a lot longer than we have. It just goes to show you the power of the media that got behind Romney. You know, they don't know about this guy or his ability to be president or anything like that. I mean, he hasn't got any kind of history of, of government other than being a governor. But, I mean, as far as, you know, in the, it's a different level on the federal well, level. Well, and that, if you're going to go by being a former governor, well, there were several other former governors. Sure. There was Gary Johnson, who's now the libertarian presidential candidate. And then there was uh, Buddy Romer, right, a former Buddy. governor of Louisiana. Why is it that they got the shaft yeah. and Mitt Romney got all the, all the time in the world? I yeah. mean. I just don't get it. It just—it's uh, not like he's over quite. Yeah, he's filthy rich. He's a good businessman and all that, but you know that—that that doesn't mean anything. I mean, they're if you're if the politicians aren't rich before they go up there, most of them figure out a way to be crooked enough to get rich. So, well, uh, they don't exactly figure it out. They just get bought off. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't take much figuring. <laughs> exactly. But. And uh, next week, uh, as you mentioned in uh, your latest Cannabis Corner episode, which you can find online right now on your website, CannabisCorner.com, the episode entitled The Cannabis Bandwagon, right. you discussed about people becoming more active. Right. Pe that's really what's missing today. We have, a, we have 50 million people out there in America that use cannabis daily. And, but you can't, I mean, more, you get more votes for people on American Idol than trying to change a law that they know is unjust and has been unjust for, for, since its very inception and everything that's followed since it. And it's just amazing that people would endure the kind of atrocity like we see across the border. And that's all due because of the cartel and the DEA and the illegality of it. If, if the substance were legal, you wouldn't have these gangs on the streets of America selling weed out on the corner and killing people to see who controls what corner. It, it's just insane. And preventing people from being able to, to use this herb if they so choose. It's, uh, it's just nobody's business. It's like saying, oh, well, every tomato and ham sandwich that you make from now on, I want you to put a couple of leaves of basil on there because I just am going to control which herbs you eat. <laughs> it's, it's no different. I mean, it's, it's absolutely no different. And they, they, they come up with all this, you know, pretty much just 100% BS lies that they've done all their since the beginning of the campaign. I mean, you could take anything. You could make water illegal tomorrow, and you'd have gangs forming to see who's going to sell it. Well, well more importantly, you'd have idiots out there 
that would go along with no, it. No, of course they'd go along with it because the government said it's illegal. I mean, of course, the good news is they wouldn't be around for a couple of days. No, that's right. <laughs> After about two or three days, we wouldn't have to worry about that kind of stupidity. <laughs> but but you'd have gangs formed that were going to sell the water and what turfs he was going to control what. I mean, it, that, that's what people don't realize. They you can make any substance illegal. Didn't we learn from alcohol? I mean, we didn't learn anything from that whole period. No. Absolutely nothing. And now we sell it in liquor stores. Sell it in liquor stores, make tax revenues off yeah, of it. Yeah, exactly. Make uh, people who own the breweries filthy rich. I mean, it just, it's just beyond me. I and see, that, that's what I foresee happening, because I think sooner or later it's going to happen. We said that 40 years well, ago. I, I know. But I mean, that was after waiting about 30 or 40 years. So, yeah. you know, it's just. Well, things got a lot worse in that 40-year period. Well, so they sure did. They, they certainly did. I mean, there was a time. Even in the late 60s, when Timothy Leary filed his lawsuit, the Supreme Court threw out the Marijuana Tax Act. They said that it, that it was a law that entrapped you. Uh, you know, it was impossible for you to be in trouble before you got in trouble. You know, it was pos- you, know you entrapped yourself, and that's illegal. Yeah. And so they threw that out. Of course, their answer to that just a few years later was the Controlled Substance Act. And it had a lot to do with the, the movement that was going on, the Vietnam War that was going on and all. It, it, that was kind of a distraction. They, they managed to get the control of the out of because everybody was consumed with the Vietnam War. Yeah. And it just, it's just gotten. And then, of course, Reagan Bush years, the Just Say No program, the, and then the DEA really, <laughs> I mean, they, they just took it to a whole new level. And then all of a sudden, you know, smoking cannabis is the most dangerous thing possible. And it's going to be our number one priority, you know, and. Well, I, I do think that eventually, somewhere down the road, and maybe a couple of years or a couple of decades or a couple of centuries from now, <laughs> you're, you're going to have recreational drugs sold in stores like liquor stores. Yeah. And you'll have to be carded, of course. It'll be taxed and regulated, but at least it'll be legal and you won't have to worry well, you, about going to jail. You won't be put in jail for it. Exactly. That's, you know, that's what they don't realize. They, they ruin people's lives that are productive citizens just because they choose to use this herb versus going and getting smashed on whiskey or or God knows prescription drugs from their doctor that they can get hand over fist. That's not a problem to get that. And it, it, why, why would they care that somebody smokes cannabis? You, you've got the worst stuff out there legal. That's well, very true. I mean, all the stuff that's being churned out by the big pharma industry. It kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. And since the dawn of time, there's not one recorded death from overdose of cannabis. Yeah. And for anyone that, that doesn't really care about this subject, about uh, recreational drugs, well, yeah. there's a more important reason to support it's the legalization. It's a constitutional right. It's constitutional, plus with what's happening next week, Hemp History Week. Hemp History Week. Going on from June 4th through the 10th. You know, the, the hemp industry, if it was brought back into this country, would really turn things around. It would. We, we could completely quit exporting almost a trillion dollars worth of oil a year into this country for our gasoline. We could totally switch everything to hemp fuel. It, anything you can make from oil, you can make from the hemp plant. There's over 50,000 products right now currently being made by other countries around the world that are profiting off of the hemp. They don't, they don't have these stupid laws and all that, and it's just foolish with the United States as, as technologically advanced as we are. And all of our, I mean, we, the yields that they talk about for the hemp and all, they have to go back to the turn of the century back in the 1900s because that's the last, other than the time we did it during World War II briefly, but that's the only data we have on how much the yields were. Those were with antique farm equipment. By today's standards, a mule and a plow would have been about <laughs> like a, you know, a, <laughs> going down one of these thirty-row planters. I mean, uh, it's, yeah. that's how far we've advanced. Well, well plus, how many how many trees would we save a year? Uh, well, if you if you just take the fact alone that an acre of hemp is the equivalent of four acres of pine trees alone, that's renewable every year. Every year, it takes four acres of pine to do what one acre of hemp does, and you can grow the hemp every year. It takes forty years to get the pine ready. So, in other words, you're going to do ten crops a, every year for ten years. Over, I mean, 10 sets of four with the hemp crop, which is 40 crops before that one pine crop is produced. So there's definitely many reasons why people should support the, the hemp movement and the legalization sure. movement as well. Uh, what is the website? The, the website is hemphistory.com, and my website is cannabiscorner.com, hemphistoryweek.com. Go there. Go to the cannabiscorner.com. We have lots of videos that are on this. Very Both site. sites are very educational. A great way to uh, learn more about this cause. Thanks so much, Dad, for joining us. Thank you, James. So Carrie Burns, the host of Cannabis Corner. Final segment of Freedom Files coming up right after this, right here on Ron Paul Radio. <laughs> 